Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a blade battle for you. Da -da -da -da. Pretty sure I call it that, right? Blade battles? Maybe it was Battle of the Blades, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, it's gonna be a good one. So first up, I actually have three of these planned right now, actually four, but I think I'm just gonna film three right now. The first one up is the Battle of of the rust proof knives bum, 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 from quiet carry who's gonna be the salty loser <laughs> get it <laughs> anyway i was lazy i didn't feel like sitting up my whole camera thing to do the face cam thing but i didn't want to not do an intro gotta have an intro to blade battles right even if it's shitty anyway i got my uh naf sergeant finger guillotine shirt on shout out Go check out his Teespring. He's got this shirt. I think he's got another design now. Um, you can also check out my Teespring. It's in the description right down there. And I have the Detent Collection up on Teespring. You can get t-shirts. Uh, and then I even did a, a throw pillow. <laughs> and then I did a um, a pint glass with the Got, uh, not the Got Detent, with the Detent Diva logo on it and all the shirts and stuff are got detent shirts so anyway if you were interested in that i did set up a teespring because the way i did it last time i had to ship everything and it's only a few dollars more for you guys and it just ships one at a time right to your door it just makes sense any money i get from it goes right back in the channel anyway tonight what we have is your first contender the quiet carry Waypoint coming in hot with a 3.3 ish inch blade of Vanex Super Clean. Da, 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 da. It's got a sweet ass grind, got a little hollow grind on this bad boy, thin blade stock, titanium scales with a wire deep carry clip that goes to the butt end of the knife and is reversible. This is sporting a liner lock, which is important. That liner is made of LC200N. Scales are titanium. Hardware is marine grade titanium or steel. I think titanium. Vanex super clean on the blade. And then the LC200N liner on phosphor bronze washers. This baby is essentially rust proof. People have tested this thing to its limits. And we've seen almost zero rust. I think Jake over at Bearded Gear has put this thing through the fucking ringer. Um, he would just drop it in any liquid he could find. The man would take a piss and throw it in the toilet. And then just let it dry in his pocket. Because he's a dirty son of a bitch. Go tell him I said that. And uh, he had a little bit of like surface rust, I think, on the LC200 liner that he got right off or something. So basically rust proof um and for normal use awesome right and i love these knives because i am a rust magnet this summer i discovered i am acidic i don't know what it is it's the ass juice it's the hands it's the sweat i have no idea but i rust knives like it's my freaking job so i've been very interested to get back into quiet carry and vanex so that is the waypoint and the contender, the competitor, is the quiet carry drift. Boom, 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 boom. In G10, baby. Now, this does come in a titanium scale just like this, but it's a frame lock, which is important here. This is a G10 liner lock, and I think that's more comparable than the frame lock version, especially for me as a lefty. Yes, the titanium's a little nicer in hand for me. I'm not a big grip guy. Um, but having the reversible clip, for one, being left-handed, the titanium one doesn't come with that, and having a liner lock instead of a frame lock like the titanium drift made a world of difference as a lefty. That's the reason I got this knife. Um, to be 100% honest, both of these have been provided to the channel by Quiet Carry. So I want to give a big shout out to Quiet Carry for uh, essentially donating these to the channel so that I can do this type of bullshit. 
Um, I can review them. I can test them. I can do this blade battle, which to me is just awesome. I really appreciate them for that. Um, I didn't go asking for free stuff. I asked for a discount. I try to do that when I can. It helps the channel, obviously, if I get a discount when I order stuff. And they graciously let me have these. So first I reviewed this guy and absolutely fell in love with the G10 reversible clip liner lock uh, drift. And then I had a waypoint about a year ago that I sold. And this is kind of like a CQI version. They've done some uh, updates that you don't really notice. Um, but I wanted to get it again because of my rusting issue. And they sent this over. So who is going to be the victor of the blade battle? <laughs> battle of the rust proof knives commence. Are you ready to rumble? See you in a second. All right, here we go, guys. The battle of the rust proof knives. So, here are your categories tonight. Waypoint drift, right? You got materials, price, perceived value, ergos, aesthetics, cutting, carry, sounds, fit and finish, action, and leftability. That's an important one I've added because. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's a tiebreaker, and it makes sense I'm left-handed. How does this knife work left-handed? This is an important category for anybody watching who is right-handed. You can basically remove this category, maybe, and then figure out who won. It's up to you. If you're right-handed, you don't want to, you know, consider this category. I totally get it, but I still want you to watch, right? All right. So let us begin the battle. I'm just kidding. All right. Materials are up first, guys. This one's interesting. So both of these knives are roughly $300 when they come in this titanium version um, with vanek super clean i mean that's pretty much they both come in the same configurations right you can get one in g10 you can get one in titanium uh the only difference is the drift in titanium is a frame lock and it is i think like 15 or 20 dollars more that's uh i think the only difference um, I'm pretty sure they're like 315 or something, and these are 295 in this titanium. They're both on phosphor bronze washers. They're both Vanex super clean. They both have the marine grade stuff, the LC200N. So I kind of have to give them both a point because they both come in. They're, they're literally the same company. Um, so yeah, I'll give them each a point there. You can have ties. Um, I have to do that. I mean, there's no way somebody wins the the materials category. Unless I base it on these two knives, then yeah, the titanium one would win. But that's kind of unfair. I'm kind of basing it on the models, right? Price. So I have to give this one to the waypoint because the waypoint in titanium and Vanax, like I just said, this right here is $295. Whereas this version in this... I'm pretty sure is like 315. So there's some kind of difference in there where maybe the frame lock makes it more expensive. I don't know. The G10 versions, I'm not sure which one's more or if they're the same. They're probably the same, like 240 bucks. But I gotta give this one to the waypoint. Makes sense, right? Perceived value. So to me. Again, sorry, this is kind of tough. I think this is a, a tie because they're both the same, right? They're both perceived as like rust proof knives that are um, awesome and whatever. And they both kind of went through their high point of fame where like when this came out, whenever they dropped them, they were gone, right? Like you couldn't get them. Um, but for like that day, maybe you could get them and then they would sell out in a day or two. Um and they'd be gone. And then this came out like six months later or a year later. And the same thing happens 
when they drop. Um, this one may be kind of more hyped at this point right now still, but I'd say they're both equally perceived in terms of value. So I got to give them both the point there. Uh, Ergos. So this is a good one. This is one I really wanted to dive into because when I had the waypoint before and, and now I obviously have it again, that was a dumb statement. The waypoint I have, um, it's very comfortable in my hand. So it's a larger knife. You can see in terms of handle length, it's a little bit of a larger knife, right? It's got a little bit more down here on it, but the drift has that choil. So what I was thinking was, could the drift be better because of the choil? But this is a choil. It's just, you know, in the middle of the handle or the top of the handle. It's not up by the blade. You can hold it like this, but I would never recommend that. This is extremely comfortable. You do have a neutral handle once you get past that. And that feels great in hand. It is a thin knife all around. Um, but it is extremely comfortable. You get a good amount of reach. And you get a lot of blade for this Uh handle i just really like it now the drift on the other hand it literally melts into your hand like that's comfortable this is extraordinary um this is one of the most comfortable knives it's thin it's equally as thin there but it's not as thin thickness wise it's a little bit thicker especially up here and they have that choil where i would even say in this backed up grip they're very, very similar, but this is still a little more comfortable. And then when you're in that choil, it's just game over. Absolutely locked in. The drift easily wins the ergos category. But the waypoint is still a very ergonomic knife. I'm not trying to put it down. I'm not saying you wouldn't enjoy it. Um, but for sure, the drift is just a little more um, comfortable. Uh, aesthetics. So that's an interesting one as well, because I'm going to say that a lot. I do that a lot in these battles. Um, they're both in my eyes, just very unique and gorgeous designs. Um, I should say the waypoint. Well, I guess they're not unique. They're thumb stud opening knives with a drop point. I mean, the sea otter and the rock wall from, um, tactile turn the sea otters from MBK. They both look almost identical to this. Now, that this knife existed first, so I guess it could say it's unique. It's, I, I think I shouldn't have said unique. Um, it kind of just looks like a knife, but I don't know. To me, it is unique in some way. I don't know the way they did it. And the drift is kind of the same way. I mean, it kind of has a field duty look to it. It kind of has an Oz Machine Company look to it. Again, the drift was out before that, I believe. Um, not the field duty. It's been around. I and mean, if this had a hole like the Field Duty, it would look just like one, I think. But yet they somehow stand out as their own designs, right? And now I have to decide which one I think is more aesthetically pleasing. I really, really like the drift. Um, I love the lines. And I don't know, it has something to do with this nice big belly on this drop point where this kind of has more like Sabenza vibes to me on it i love that hollow grind but i do love the way this i guess clip point or reverse tanta whatever the hell you want to call it looks um man i love the titanium on this one but again comparing models i've had both in titanium uh shit i guess i have to go with my gut that says i like the drift just a little bit better in terms of aesthetics, especially a titanium variant. So the drift is winning that category. Cutting. So this is a very interesting category. God, I told you I would say it every fucking time. This is a, a category that to me is, is very unique because I've always enjoyed cutting with the waypoint. It's just got an excellent hollow grind. Um, it's very thin behind the edge. I know my cutting's not doing it justice. And this is a brand new one. So I don't, you know, from factory edge, whatever you want to, you know, take from that. It's just, I don't know. I've always enjoyed the waypoint. Just is very easy to get into a cut. 
I don't feel like I'm pulling out of the cut because I have plenty of blade. Love the hollow grind, thin behind the edge. Just an excellent, excellent cutter. Very thin blade stock. And the drift, I feel almost the same way about. Um, and I feel a little bit more confident in my cut because of how I can choke up right up onto the blade. And this one has a full flat grind, or almost full flat grind. Very thin behind the edge as well. And you'll see here, I'm getting, I would say, better cuts. Again, factory edge. Better cuts than I was on this, but I think that's just because of how much more control I have being up close, see? So, I don't know. This feels a little thicker behind the edge just based on how these cuts are feeling. I mean, wow, it's it feels very similar, actually, I gotta say. Hold on. Sorry, I do suck at cutting. We all know that. So, I think given the fact that they are basically identical in terms of the edge on them, and that makes sense because they're coming from the same factory. They're probably ground to a similar thickness and all that stuff. Yes, one is a hollow grind and one is a flat grind slash saber grind. Um, but... Hang on, and I'll, I'll get to my butt. But in actual use with these knives, I have noticed that with the drift, I don't know if it's because of the length of the blade or all this belly, I do tend to kind of slip out of a cut. Because I'll get into the cut, and then I guess it hits the belly and kind of like, I don't know, I just come out of the cut and I end up losing... The cut, if that makes sense. Whereas with this guy, I have a little more blade length. And because it's a little more of a straighter edge with less belly out to the tip, it just tends to stay through that cut more. And I don't know if it's the way I'm cutting with it, etc. But I enjoy the cutting a little more with the waypoint because of that. I don't have to reset myself or whatever like I occasionally do on this. I still love this knife. This knife has been my um, yard work knife. It was since I got it uh, for the rest of the summer. Um, it was my yard work knife. It has cut weed whacker cable, all types of stuff. And I've seriously enjoyed carrying it and doing that. Um, but I think had I had this knife, I probably would have been pocketing this or at least switching back and forth um, because I have a little more faith in staying in that cut. I hope that makes sense. But this is going to the waypoint. Carry. So um, both of these are excellent. They both have a wire deep carry clip. Um, I do have to knock the drift because the titanium version, again, is a frame lock and only uh, right hand carry. So that kind of sucks, right? Uh, at least I'm 90% sure it's only right hand. Now I'm like questioning myself, but I'm fairly certain it is right hand only on the titanium frame lock. Doesn't matter anyway, because they both have that clip. And uh, this guy is just a little bit lighter and a little bit thinner. So you're obviously gonna be feeling this less in pocket because of the weight and the size so regardless of if this one came right and left on the titanium it would go to the weight point so sounds so this is an interesting one because neither of these are really like a, like super pleasing in terms of acoustics you'll hear it has a good thwack Oh, sorry. Has a good thwack out. Not much on the close. Right-handed. You can hear it a little better. I like it, but it's not something that, like, I think about where I'm like, you know, the waypoint and the sounds, right? The Drift has a similar type thwack, but it's a little more pronounced to me. And I don't know if it's because of the LC200N liners. All of this, by the way, is LC200N in here. At least I'm pretty sure of that. 
um, unless that's titanium, which would make sense. But I'm pretty sure it's LC200N all around, and I can check for you. Yep. So it wouldn't be sticking if it was titanium, right? Um, that's the blade, but... Huh? That's weird. There must be some steel in there. I don't know how that works. Anyway, terrible example there. This just has a little more sound to it. I have to give one a point, and I got to give it to this one. Plus, this one you can shake shut a little bit. Watch. This one, you're not shaking at all, and you're not going to get a closing sound other than... So... It's going to the drift small margin fit and finish so again equally done in terms of fit and finish in my opinion um i like the inset lock i think on this a little bit better than i like it on say this g10 version but the frame lock drift is very nice as well. So it's kind of hard to really choose because they're made by the same factory, using the same materials, essentially doing the same things. So could you argue argue a hollow grind maybe is a little better than this flat grind? Maybe. Could you argue that this stone wash is easier to do than this satin grind i guess but again this comes in stone wash this comes in satin it's not really something i can argue one way or the other um i'd be interested in the comments obviously i'm interested in what you guys think overall and your thoughts on this whole thing but in terms of fit and finish would you award one or the other again assuming they're both the same configuration because they both come in all the same configurations. So I got to give them both the point. Uh, action. So this one's easy. This one goes to the waypoint, uh, the drift, sorry. I've had, uh, this is my second waypoint, I believe, and I've handled three. I had Jake's from Beer to Gear in for review before I ever bought one. And um, they have excellent detent in terms of the flick out so i have no issue or qualm with the detent i very much enjoyed it i can left hand reverse flick it which is fun um it's on washers which are just not that smooth now i'm sure over time they will get smoother and smoother and it'll be smoother essentially right but again i had one of these for months like it wasn't like i had it for a couple weeks had it for months. I carried it a decent amount. Um, and again, I handled Jake's that he had for, a, I don't know, four months before I ever touched it. And he carried that thing a lot. And it literally had the same action as this. It just, it's not a dropper, right? Like you're not going to get it to drop. It just doesn't seem to be set up to do that the way, you know, everything in there is working. It's just not a dropper. And I don't think it would be even if you like polished the washers or something but that said it's still great opening action it's just you got to shut it that's essentially the point um yeah you got to shut it also both of these are dead nuts centered um and all the ones i've had i believe have been pretty much dead nut centered so that goes back to fit and finish but this guy it took about two days and it started doing that and um, I can essentially drop it to my nail and shake it shut. Um, for me, for a um, quiet carry knife, that is uh, about as good as you're going to get it. I've had titanium drifts, again, I mentioned, and I had one that you could kind of do this with, and then I had one that was a little stiffer. Still nothing like this. This one's just super not drop shutty. Um, and again, not meant to be in any way, right? I'm not holding it against Quiet Carry or the knife. I'm just, you know, I got to argue this point here. Action. I love both of them. Um, normally, I'm not a fan of washers or knives that don't drop shut. But 
the whole rust proof thing and how cool these knives are in general um, really makes me not worry about it with quiet carry. But the fact that I can get a little bit of fidget out of this one makes it all the better for me. So the drift wins that category. And then we have leftability. And this is kind of, and it, this is, I must said interesting. This is one that I, I'm not sure about because again, this comes in left hand, right hand in all models, G10 and titanium. Um, and this only comes in lefty righty in the G10, right? Um, but the reverse flick and the thumb flick on the waypoint just feel a little bit more intuitive left-handed where on the waypoint i can reverse flick it easily it has the cutout here but you'll see there on this side the thumb stud is almost right up on the frame and you don't get nearly as much cut out whereas on the drift it stands off a little bit and you do get a little bit of a cutoff, same kind of point, obviously. But um, so I easily just drop right in, bang! I'm right up behind that thumb stud. They also did a great job with these studs. I don't know if they're different. Uh, get in there with the reverse flick, bang! Right on this guy. It's just you know when I did the review the first time around last year or earlier this year, that was my biggest gripe with this knife was. I would kind of slip over sometimes. They seem to have taken care of whatever that was because I I don't think I've ever misfired this one. And maybe I'm just used to knives now more now and whatever I know to just dive in and, and push. But you just don't get as much of a, a flick left-handed. So the trade-off is always getting a lefty clip and uh, having a little more uh, room to fire out on the drift the disengagement is about the same you have the lock you know and you just slide it over inset lock that one's a little smoother because it doesn't have any jimping or anything this one but i don't know so it comes down to that and i do have a lefty clip version of this knife it does exist so i think given that fact and the extra space there, I'm giving it to the drift on left ability. But it is very close. The waypoint is very lefty friendly. If you're left handed, I wouldn't dissuade you in any way from getting a waypoint if you prefer this design or this size or whatever, right? Um, so that's it, guys. And I think if I'm right, the drift won, but let's count them up three, five, six. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the drift. So your winner, winner, chicken dinner is the quiet carry drift. The king of the rust proof knives as of right now. The king of the quiet carries. Um, the Waypoint put up a big old fight and I very much enjoy this knife. This thing is not like going anywhere. It's not... Um, I just got it and I, I very much enjoy it. I have absolutely been looking forward to spending time with this knife again and I'm glad that it's in the collection again. So um, this loss does not mean anything bad for the waypoint, but the drift did win. And um, again, I want to give a big, big shout out to Quiet Carry guys. I know um, that. I don't know. I don't even know what I was going to say, but I absolutely appreciate Quiet Carry. Bryce over there is a great dude. Um, I would definitely recommend going to check out their Instagram. Go to check out their website. Um, pick up some knives. Um, yes, like I said, these were donated to the channel, but I've spent my fair share of money on that website. I've bought at least two or three drifts and at least a waypoint, and that's just those two knives. Um, I absolutely love their stuff, and they're so good to the channel. They've donated knives for giveaways. Um, they did donate this right here for a giveaway I'm going to do, I think, tomorrow. My time tomorrow on the um, Lefty Live live stream. Today is November 3rd, by the way, for me. 
So I'll be giving this away tomorrow. It's just a cool little pry bar, bottle opener, thingamabobber, bit driver thing that Quiet Carry has made. And they just have donated stuff like this to the channel and just been awesome, I, you know. Um, I really appreciate them. So any support you guys can go and give them, please do. I'd absolutely appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's it. Big old win for the Quiet Carry Drift, guys. I love you all. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.